modern lens implants used in cataract and lens replacement surgery help improve the lives of millions of patients around the world every year, and they're extremely safe and effective. As humans, we want perfection. Some of us are lucky enough to be born with perfect vision naturally. Others of us have to rely on glasses or contact lenses to help us see clearly. In our practice, we routinely replace the natural lens inside the eye with lens implants. These patients choose to pay out of pocket for this lens implant technology that will hopefully reduce or quite possibly eliminate their need for glasses to see at all distances, far, mid, and near. Now, we advise all of our patients before surgery that we can't guarantee perfection and that they may need glasses for some occasions to see their best after surgery. The reality is that some patients, despite our best efforts, simply do not see as well as they want after their surgery. Their eyes look great, the surgery is performed normally, there's no problems, yet they still can't see as well as they want. Now this is a very small group. It's probably less than 1% of our patients, but we see and treat thousands of patients every year in our practice. If we have 20 to 30 patients per year who are not satisfied with their vision, despite surgery being done normally and there being no problems, they're not happy. Then how do we manage these 20 to 30 patients per year? Well, this video is an example of how we managed one patient in this scenario. And the reality is when we're encountering these rare circumstances, we have to find creative ways to address these unique problems and find solutions. And in this video, we're going to show you a scenario that unfolded. Let me introduce you to our patient, Bridget. She's a 62 year old woman who had prior LASIK surgery to both eyes in 1999 to correct nearsightedness. And we initially saw her in March of 2019. Her exam on that day showed uncorrected vision far away of 2040 from the right and 2200 from the left eye. Uncorrected vision of J2 right eye and J1 plus left eye. Her refraction is as follows. And she was wearing long distance glasses to see clearly far away and removed her glasses and just would read without glasses. Her ocular exam was normal. She had had prior LASIK surgery to both eyes. We informed her about the fact that nothing's perfect and that she might need glasses part time to see her best. And she expressed to us that she wanted to see better far away. And that was her priority more than having near vision. So we felt that the Symphony implant would be a good option for her and it would allow her to see well far and mid and she might need glasses for near. So she eventually received elective laser lens replacement surgery to both eyes with Symphony implants between April and May of 2019. And we eventually performed the following enhancement procedures after she received the symphony lens implants to help her see her best without glasses between July 2019 and February of 2020. Ultimately, her vision as of September 22nd, 2020 was far vision 2025 on the right and 2060 on the left, and uncorrected near vision was 2200 right, 2030 left, or J16 and J2 respectively. Her refraction is as follows. Ultimately, she was not happy with her vision. She was not happy with her surgical outcome, and she felt that the results of her surgery did not at all meet her expectations when she started the whole journey. So ultimately, in mid-September of 2020, I received a letter from Bridget, this patient, who expressed to me the frustration she was having with her vision and how she was not at all satisfied with her surgical results after having gone through this long journey of multiple procedures to optimize her vision so, so she could see without glasses. And that in fact, she was wearing multiple pairs of glasses after having had 
these elective eye surgical procedures. So we asked her to come in for an eye exam and her eye exam was normal. She just could not see as well as she wanted without having to wear glasses. We had tried all the procedures that we routinely perform to help our patients with lens implants optimize their vision. We would perform YAG capsulotomies to both eyes, an astigmatic keratotomy to the right eye, and then LASIK enhancement surgery to both eyes. And her frustration was obvious. So in March of 2019, she received the Symphony lens implants. And those lens implants typically work really well. They help our patients see far mid and with pretty good near vision, although we tell those patients, you might need some glasses to read small print up close. But the Symphony implants work great as a rule. Fast forward to September of 2019, a newer lens implant called the Panoptix lens implant became commercially available in the United States and we started using it. And we found that that implant gave really good far, mid-range, and gave even better up close vision as a general rule than the Symphony lens implant. In her eyes, the Symphony implants were underperforming. They were giving her essentially one clear range of vision. So in the right eye, she could see clearly far, but everything mid-range and near was out of focus. In her left eye, she could see clearly up close, but the mid-range and far away vision were largely out of focus. So her Symphony lens implants in her eyes did not give the range of focus that Symphony lenses deliver for the vast majority of our patients. Then the thought occurred to me that if only she had a panoptics implant instead of a Symphony implant, then maybe the panoptics implant would give her a wider range of vision than the Symphony lenses, which were underperforming for her. The limiting factor was that she had already had bilateral YAG capsulotomies, so she had an open posterior capsule, and essentially it's not generally accepted, it's not kosher to remove a single piece acrylic lens implant like the Symphony implant in the presence of an open posterior capsule and then implant or replace the explanted Symphony implant with another single piece acrylic implant like the panoptics. Because when you have an open posterior capsule, it's exceedingly difficult to place a second implant into the open posterior capsule after the patient's already had their first surgery, which in her case was a symphony implant. So in September of 2020, she was at this point 18 months post receiving a symphony implant in both eyes. So we had a very long talk and I basically told her, hey, I have maybe exchanged a lens implant in the, from inside of a bag and replaced another implant inside the same capsular bag in the presence of an open posterior capsule one time in my 26 years of doing eye surgery. So if she was willing to accept the risks and the uncertainties, the unknowns of having me perform a procedure, which I had really never done before, which was specifically removing a symphony implant in the presence of an open posterior capsule after YAG capsulotomy, and then replacing that symphony with a panoptics lens that I'm going to place inside the capsular bag in the presence of an open posterior capsule, then I was willing to give it a try to try and help her see better. And she understood the situation and said, I'm willing to give it a try. So we decided to, to schedule her for intraocular lens exchange. So you have a symphony in your right eye. You have a symphony in your left eye. We put them in April and May of 2019 when the panoptics lens did not exist. And right now your right eye can see far you have a little astigmatism, so it's not perfect far. Your left eye can see near, but nothing far away, correct? Correct. And so the, this, the issue is, the way I tell it is, or the way I explain it to you, is like 
90 to 98% of people, they have a broader range of focus with the symphony. So, but your right eye sees far and it sees lousy up close with the symphony, correct? Sure. And your left eye, because it's set to be nearsighted with a symphony lens, it sees near, but nothing far away. Correct. All right. So you have an issue with the disparity. They don't work together very well, right? Correct. So you have to wear like multiple glasses. Well, well, medically, I have headaches and have no depth perception. And then just in terms of, you know, life inconveniences, I, I, yeah, I'm wearing three sets of glasses just to get through any operation. You know, I wear reading glasses and then I don't wear medium range glasses. And okay. then I have to wear distance glasses. And this may or may not be a factor, but my eyes are very sensitive to the light also. Are you, are any of those glasses bifocals? Or are they just for no. for one distance no, only? You, you did write a bifocal prescription, but in terms of headaches, that was even worse. So I do have two separate sets of prescription glasses. You said there's three sets. So is there uh, a third? The, the sunglasses, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, they're prescription sunglasses for yeah, far away. For distance, yes. Understood. Okay, so then, um, so because you, your eyes cannot appreciate the full range of focus with a symphony... And if we just adjusted the focus with LASIK or some other surgery, you'd still have a narrower range of focus Correct. than what you want. So we, after test driving different lenses, we came to the conclusion that an option, though rarely done, is to remove your symphony okay. in the presence of an open, we call it posterior capsule because you've had a YAC capsulotomy, and put in a panoptics lens the thought being that we will expand your range of focus with a lens that has a wider range of focus. And I, I've i done it in patients with a intact capsule, but not with an open capsule. So that's the variable, and we'll be real careful, but we'll see how it goes. So here's our view through our Zeiss Lumera T microscope. We can see the symphony implant. It's well centered with an open posterior capsule. We make our initial side port one millimeter incision and then introduce Occucote. Our primary incision is made with a 2.8 millimeter diamond keratome. We use a Donenfeld flap elevator to lift the anterior capsule from the anterior surface of the IOL. Then we visco dissect the anterior and posterior capsular leaflet adhesions with AMVISC plus viscoelastic. We create additional entry points to allow us to introduce our viscoelastic to the entire circumference of the capsular bag equator. We use an MST micro forceps to grab the leading haptic and dial it out of the capsular bag. A cyclodialysis spatula is used to elevate the right edge of the IOL out of the bag. Then we rotate the trailing haptic out of the bag. IOL cutters are used to bisect the symphony implant, which is then removed in two pieces through the 2.8 millimeter incision. AMVISC Plus is used to expand the capsular bag 360 degrees around the equator to allow for placement of the panoptics IOL. Anterior vitrectomy is performed. Additional viscoelastic is infused to expand the capsular bag leaflets. Then the panoptics lens is inserted into the eye. We then rotate from operating at the top of the cornea to a temporal position to allow us better access to the IOL. The leading haptic in this view is gently placed into the capsular bag equator at 12 o'clock. In that location, there appears to be adequate capsular support for the leading haptic. Then the trailing haptic is carefully placed into the capsular bag at 6 o'clock. The panoptics now appears to be centered with both haptics inside the capsular bag leaflets. We consider performing an anterior vitrectomy or IA to wash out the viscoelastic, then decide against that step to avoid trampolining of the anterior chamber and possible subluxation of the panoptics. We instead use balanced salt solution on a 27 gauge cannula to flush the viscoelastic from the eye. This technique keeps the IOL stable in the bag and reduces the likelihood that the panoptics will sublux or move out of the capsular bag. Then we place myostat to constrict the pupil and verify centration of the panoptics. 
At the end of surgery, the panoptics appears perfectly positioned. Here's the post-op day number one view through the slit lamp microscope. The implant central optic appears perfectly centered in the pupil. The patient's vision and refraction on post-op day one are as follows. Importantly, she likes the vision through the panoptics better than she did through the symphony lens, and she seems to have a wider range of focus on post-op day one than she ever had with the symphony. On November 11th, 2020, two weeks after lens exchange, her vision from the left eye was 2040 far and J3 or 2040 near. Her refraction was as follows. And as we take a look at her preoperative refraction and far and near vision, she felt that overall her vision was better. She preferred her vision with the new panoptics over the symphony. But we elected to correct her astigmatism on that same day. And so she had an astigmatic keratotomy to the left eye in the office using the following technique. On November 19th, 2020, one week after the astigmatic keratotomy and one month after the lens exchange to the left eye, her vision was 2020 far and 2020 near, or J1 plus near. Her refraction was Plano. Let's do it. Okay, so now it's uh, today is November 19th. 19th. You had your lens exchange October. 14th. 14th so we're a month out you had your exchange yes. how did it go how did it seem to go that's the, we're talking about October 14th yeah the procedure itself was, uh -huh. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm uneventful my my job is simple I just lie there obviously it took longer than the other ones but the procedure itself was uneventful okay good. from my perspective all right and so then you came back the day after surgery this is October 15th how do you think what were do you recall your first impressions um, but that, that first night, my eye was very tender and very sensitive. I had, a, I had to take some pain meds to sleep that night. Uh, the next day, it felt uh, foggy, but no, no discomfort, no, no anything. Um, the vision was, honestly, it felt like it was about the same because it was still sort of foggy. Okay. And then we saw you a week later. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you were thinking at that point? Uh, it felt like the, the up-close vision was not as good, um, and that yeah, it felt like I was actually losing some, some vision. Did you feel at one week after the exchange with the panoptics that your vision was better or worse than it was with the symphony? It was better than with the symphony. In what way? Uh, range. Range. I could, I could see. Uh, I kind of had um, monovision prior with the symphony I had monovision and so being able to see more more distance with my left eye um, so you had better range even at one week yes. and then we noted some astigmatism at the one week visit and we said come back in like another week or two make sure it's stabilized yeah and if it's stable then we'll treat it and we, we came back we did we, your refraction your head stabilized mm -hmm. and we said okay let's correct the astigmatism and we did an astigmatic keratotomy to the left eye. How was that? I mean, the procedure was was nothing for nothing. me. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, immediately things started to get better. I was, um, yeah. Each day it, it's gotten better. And the the truth is, when I came in today, I said it hasn't changed. But honestly, that's probably because it, it the the initial change was so drastic and such an improvement that it hasn't gotten any better yet, but it hasn't gotten worse either. Yeah. So now it's uh, a little more than a month out and mm -hmm. you're a week out from the AK. Yes. And when you cover your right eye, do you feel like you can see far away? Yes. And yes. we tested your near vision and what was your near vision? 2020. Yeah. So you've got the full range of focus now with the panoptics that we could not achieve with the symphony just because your brain and the symphony just don't quite agree with one another and you had a, a narrower range of focus with the symphony than what we usually get. And now you have a different implant and it's a wider range of focus, it works. Mm -hmm. And so do you want, you want to have your right eye done, correct? Yes. Okay, and your right eye, I think it's a far away eye. Correct. 
So when you had the symphony, we couldn't get them quite matched up right, but your left eye with the symphony was close, your right eye was far, but now your right eye sees far, but it, I think it sees very poor up close, doesn't right. it? Yep, so our hope is we'll keep on your, if we do your right eye, your right eye will see far, like it does now, but you'll have that close up. So you have binocular vision. Yes. Good, any other thoughts? Because I've told you, you know, you're kind of a rare situation, lens exchange, in the presence of an open capsule after YAG capsulotomy, how do you feel? Um, I'm excited. Okay. I hope this one is as good as the left eye. <laughs> we, we do too. Thank you. All right, good.